Right. Sorry. I love listening to her voice recording in progress. Very warm welcome. My name is Jennifer and I am one half of Psychic Phoenix. And thank you for tuning in for today's video. Today I have got Celine joining me. We had a conversation last year and um, and I suppose you could see up the top because I'm looking at you. <laughs> sat there. But before, before I introduce you, we, we kind of like came across um, maybe two years ago via Mark Atwood. Um, but this morning when I was getting like, you know, when you wake up and you have your cup of tea and then you go out in the garden, I really felt like I was meeting a very old friend. And it really made it, it made me feel like in a past life we'd met and, and you know, we were friends because that's how it felt this morning. The energy around you catching up with you, it was just felt like I was catching up with an old friend. And then I also had a psychic reading I did. And she says, there's an Irish Catholic um lady and then I thought are you Catholic well I was reared Catholic but um I suppose the term loosely applies to me yes <laughs> how interesting how interesting anyway so what I'm going to do now is just hand over to Celine to introduce herself a very very warm welcome and thank you for joining for today's conversation oh thank you Jen I've nearly I could feel this big wave of emotion as you said that about being yeah, it feels so natural and comfortable, like coming home since we connected. And I often, if I ever doubted, you know, technology and, you know, when we went into lockdown and we were all sort of forced into this Zoom world and thinking, oh, this is awful. And yet there's been it's been a revelation to me in another way. I mean, nothing compares to the beautiful connections in person. But it's really helped me understand energy and the energetic connections. And I felt quite lonely for quite a while. And then suddenly this whole world opened up that I never believed was available to me. And it just showed me how powerfully we, how powerful we are, that um, we can feel and connect and communicate and create everything. Um, yeah, energetically through being on a sort of similar frequency or a family of frequency isn't it yes um, because it was mark outwards course wasn't it yeah that we that's how we met and 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 like you i agree because it was like all these other like-minded people and it was just like it was just fantastic to 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 connect and did you did, you didn't do the um cosmic body did you Cosmic body. Um, how to raise cool? your light in your cosmic. It was with Gra oh. Dr. Gramey. Dr. Uh, Gramey. Gramey. Uh, Jeremy Ayers. Jeremy. I didn't. I did just, I've done the the um, the first one, the monetized one. Yes. I'm one. in the crypto course and I'm about to start the sovereign mastery course. Oh. This is a great plug for Mark. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Didn't intend listen. to start this way. But um, <laughs> yeah, it's suppose it's, it's in the ethers and he's... Um, yeah, a fundamental, I was thinking about it again this morning, um, being out, sorry, I probably haven't given a proper introduction, but it's, it's just where it's, it's, it's gone, but I, I, I can, I can, I can halt and, and introduce myself properly, if you like, before I go off on a tangent. Um, I forgot to say, I don't know how to edit it, so we'll just be organic and go with it. Yeah, that's okay, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so I'm based in Ireland. I'm based in Galway. I am, um, I suppose, to go back where a big change happened in my life was a diagnosis of breast cancer in 2016. Um, I suppose I've talked about it um, before and I've written a book about it, but I was living a life that was very burnt out, empty. Um, I felt very suffocated on one level and then on another level, very lonely and isolated. It was sort of very disconnected. I didn't really understand any of this, but this is what I started to wake up to, I suppose, through the experience of cancer. And I now more recently view it as I don't even like that label anymore. I've sort of gone, that's just a label, really what it has been was I released a lot of grief before the uh, the diagnosis, let's say, in the year or two before. This is now I can look back and consciously say, so there was a grieving of maybe this disconnection and separation from myself is what I feel it is or was. And this 
growth or tumor ended up just being all of that energy that had been suppressed in my body leaving. So it was the healing process. It is the healing process is how I see it. If we understand it and we have the right support. Um, so I went through all of that. I um, it was sort of a very interesting and challenging like life is um, because I was sort of pulled in a few different directions. I had lived a very traditional life, let's say, in the system. And I worked in marketing. I was in a bank then I was in the university. And but something always turned up when I was just about to feel oh, this is too much. This isn't my life. And what really sparked something in me before I left was I started to, I, I, my last job was in a university, but was going out to schools to visit teenagers and talk about going to university. And I loved that. So I suppose what that sparked in me is a love of that age group, of that connection, which I didn't realize I naturally feel very aligned to. You know, I just, there's something there that's yet to be explored. But I started to find that very limiting. But I was also very interested in the holistic world all my life. So I sort of feel, and this is through the exploration of astrology, which I know we'll talk about in a little bit, I've come to come back to into the memory of who I was as a little child of two or three. And that was a very psychic, intuitive, very connected child that was sort of, I suppose that was, I sort of shut down from that. And now that is awakening again in me through the experience of of going through cancer so there was a sort of a, a pull there between dealing with it holistically and in the conventional way and how it all worked out anyways I went through the chemotherapy radiotherapy surgery while also working with herbs and healers um, and I had been reluctant to do that initially and then I worked with someone, um, a beautiful um, healer that I was guided to just after I got the diagnosis. And she just said, look, Celine, there's no right or wrong way to do this. You know, who knows what your experience, every no experience is wasted. I That's, I think, the words of Wayne Dyer. So whatever choices you make are going to serve the work that you will do in the future. So don't I sort of felt it was a bit of a betrayal nearly to go through that system but it was really important to do that because it was really important to experience it um and that gave me enough time out because it was so difficult on my body and on my mind that it really opened a door that couldn't have been opened otherwise it's incredible now when I think of it because everything shut down in me through that experience my body stopped my mind and I was living alone at the time through it. And I just, I, I can feel it now nearly as I say it. I just experienced this breaking open um, because I surrendered. And I, I think if there's one word that I will keep repeating to myself till the day I die, it's surrender and surrender more and surrender more. And it started to teach me that once, that was quite moving now when I say it, I feel emotional saying it, that the more I surrender, the more I'm held and the more I'm. Yeah, it's very um, still very, very. um, It's so precious now, even when I talk about it at this length from it. So that's been a huge gift. And that's when this, I suppose, great shift started to happen in my life, which has led me to where I am today. I started a podcast. I've written a few books. I'm a student of astrology. I'm a student of everything, really. <laughs> student of myself so yeah it's oh. it's been a roller coaster to great one. Oh, celine thank you thank you um when i've just wrote some net notes notes down it is mm. it's been an incredible incredible journey a lot of people say that when they're faced with something that you face with and again um <sighs> It, you just hear the words cancer but it was like a wake-up call wasn't it and a lot of people say had it not happened that they, they they're grateful for it happened because it made them realize what well, not made them realize their life had to change and now listening to you talk your life is more fulfilling you, you're on that path that you were always meant meant to be so going um 
going back to you as a two to three year old child, what was your dreams when you you when you were that little child? What what did you love to do? What what did you love? Well, you know, one thing I, I find for many years, I couldn't tell you that because I think I had so, shut down so much of um, who I was. I had this image in my head uh, as a child that was very free. I suppose the free is the word that comes to me. And what came back to me very recently was we were asked in school when I was very young what we wanted to be. I can't remember if I was seven or eight. And I remember thinking of, I'm showing my age now, the TV programme Born Free with Joy Adams. You know? Oh, the lion. Yeah. And I remember thinking, and I don't know why, I, I only thought about it three or four years ago. Why did I say that? Did I really want to be out on safari in Africa or, you know, what was it? Um, I connected again so deeply with that. And I think what really was calling at me at that age is freedom the freedom to be myself and just there was something about that that really really called to me I and maybe it was just through the tv program and and I associated with people like George and the famous five I loved I wanted to be George so I had this image of who I was but that isn't really if I ask people how I came across because I was very sensitive so I often, I think, just, you know, disappeared into the shadows. People didn't really. But I think I created this imaginary version of myself that was living like that. But and then I'd be surprised if a neighbor said to me, oh, you were very quiet or sensitive. And gosh, was I? I thought I was really brave. And <laughs> so I suppose. Yeah, I mean, I can choose what's really been a fabulous gift. I'd say it's only in the last few months, mainly since probably since studying astrology, but just continually, continually peeling back the layers and, and healing and is I can feel that child now and she's alive again and I'm connected to her and she is very connected to what I would say the unseen world. That's where my probably natural home is. I'm a Piscean and I'm a Pisces rising and, you know, I that is I suppose our world hasn't always catered to a child that comes in like that, you know. Um, so I sort of feel it's so beautiful to be able to now go, yeah, now I get it. Now I get it. Now I can. So I've turned a lot of these things have started to come alive in me again. And my voice, it's very interesting. I never planned to do a podcast but voice has been a big issue all my life. And when I was two years old, I had my tonsils taken out and my adenoids. And it was very traumatic because um, my mother reminds me. And I remember not being able to breathe a lot and being held over a sink when I was a baby because, you know, she said you were nearly suffocating. And then I after that, I think I had these night terrors. She said for weeks I was screaming every night and she said it was the anesthetic, but I'd say it was a lot of trauma from that. But then I went on. It was very interesting with my voice. I was speaking so fast. So I I feel now that there was and I always remember that I felt like there was an awful lot in me that needed to be said and I couldn't get it all out. And there was so much to say. And I feel like it was just flooding through me. And I was sent to an elocution class because and I asked my mother, I said, why did you send me? And you didn't send my sister or brother. And she said, we couldn't understand you. You were speaking so fast. So, you know, it was either nothing or everything. So it's been a big part of my life to regulate my voice, to regulate, still is. Um, And I just find it, but I've always found voice. I love voice. I love the sound of voices. I'm really, I connect with them now again very much. So it's very interesting to be using my voice now. Um, yeah. So it's sort of going back, it always feels to me like when you ask that question, it's a lovely question, I think, to ask anyone, because I think if we're able to connect with it, it gives us clues to why we're here and what we're about and who we are. And we may have to go on a journey of growth to come back to that consciously, as opposed to, you know, that that is the journey of life, I suppose. That's what I sort of feel. Um, so it's a beautiful question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Because I, I do I do strongly believe that um, 
well, it's my belief that when we come into this world, you know, we we've come with the previous lifetimes um, or the knowledge and wisdom, and we're here for a purpose. I don't think going to work, say, for example, is part of the purpose because um, that's kind of like that's something that's been implemented on us. Um, but we've come with a purpose and we we come to experience this life and we've come with gifts of our talents that we should be sharing out into the world. And uh, listening to you talk, um, it's like we've had very similar um, childhoods. Um, I was um, very aware of, of um, energy around me. Like I always said I wanted to be a nurse, but there's, if you, you know, if you, my family would say to me, there's no way you was going to be a nurse because I, I can't stand, can't stand ugh, when they talk about stuff. But when, when I had a nana and she used to encourage me to place my hands on, on people, like not just my family and give healing. <clears throat> and like you, I had my adenoids out and my tonsils out at the same time. But I think I was a bit older, about seven. And like you, I was very extremely sensitive but when I wasn't in the classroom or around people, I was out and about on my push bike and, um, excuse, phone going in the background. And um, and I was very shy. And so, and then, and then I just, I don't know, something happened. Mm. That's very interesting. Yes. You know, when you hear the phone, you think, well, please shush. And when, also when you said the word surrender, it was what I felt like it was. Excuse me. It's one of those scam calls. Oh, sorry about that, Celine. Um, <clears throat> No One of the things that you spoke about also is the is surrender. How how powerful it is to surrender and it is when you surrender it's almost like you, you get out of the way and you, then it allows everything that you're meant to experience flow because we, when we're in our head we think we need this that and the other but our heart our soul know knows the truth and I guess when we're connecting and surrendering we're connecting to that I think of it as the feminine energy the goddess mm. energy um, and we're allowing her to step forward and help us and guide us and um, manifest into our lives the things that do bring us the greatest joy and love mm. so very powerful thank you for sharing that um the moving to to your podcast I, I love listening to your podcast. One of the things that struck me was when, you know, we, I don't know how you worded it, but it was like along the lines of like, everyone has got a story and it's about sharing our stories now. And I found something shifted in me, something very powerful that it was okay and safe to share my story. Um, and it was an empowering. So what you you've done numerous podcasts now, but what are you finding? What is the message? Is there is there a feeling that is there? Do you know what I'm so trying many. to ask? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll just share firstly how it started, maybe for anyone, because another great lesson that I've received since cancer is we're always shown the next step. We're not, you know, we're conditioned to this. I need to set a five year and a 10 year plan. And it's OK. It's OK to have a vision for your life. But going back to the surrendering versus trying to control the minute that was taken out of my hands and I stayed open long enough, which was the benefit of going through treatment, because. That enforced that on me because I wasn't someone who stopped easily. I went a thousand miles an hour, so I needed to be I say that I really needed to be taken out. <laughs> You know, nothing else could stop me in my tracks. So that started me opening up to listening to my intuition, the synchronicities, all of these things started to happen. And that has played a huge role in the podcast because I never, if I was to think back that if I was to try and plan what I would have done, a podcast wouldn't have been in it. So everything has turned out to be bigger and greater more expansive than I could have planned so that's a big that's been a big lesson for me so the pot just to give you an example how and trusting each step this is evolved this is still evolving so I don't know 
and it's evolving based on all the beautiful women and this feminine energy that I am just receiving. It's just been such I, I really see it now as these are my teachers showing up. I get emotional now when I say it because it's been a yeah, gosh, it's an emotional day today. <laughs> We're coming up to the equinox, so excuse me. For, <laughs> I didn't expect it, but it's been it's such a gift. I was just trying to verbalize it or articulate it to someone the other day. I said, here I am, like. Um, so it started, I'll just go back to, so it started, I went to an event in Dublin in Ireland a year ago, exactly a year ago yesterday. My God, I'm just realising that. St. Patrick's Day or the day before, Laurie Ladd, who's a sort of spiritual consciousness teacher in the States, had come to Ireland. And I had sort of followed her on and off like other people. And I decided I'd go and see her. So I went to see her, listened, and it was lovely. And afterwards, I spotted someone in the part of the hotel that I said, I knew, I said, I must go over and say hello. And I nearly didn't. And I went over and while I was waiting, there were with some of this woman, just, I could feel her beside me, just feel her energy. And she was really bubbly. And she just said, oh, did you enjoy it? I wasn't meant to be here at all tonight. Um, Just a friend couldn't come. So there was a whole synchronicity about how she ended up there. Basically, we got chatting. She, I don't know if she still has, but she had a podcast called Shatterproof that she told me about resilience. So we were talking all about that. And then I must have said about my book. And she said, would you like to come on my podcast? And I said, oh, I'd love to. So we did that. And I was just very interested in her because I just from what she had said, she had a very interesting story herself. And I said, look, I don't have a podcast or anything, but I have a little YouTube channel as a result of a course I did. I'd really love to hear it if you're open to it. So she said, oh, that'd be great. So I went on. So we left. We never saw each other after that. I gave her my book. Um, well, we did online, obviously, but so I I uh, did the interview with her, then we scheduled it. And when she came on, which is maybe eight or nine months ago, she, the first thing she said was, oh, Celine, thank you so much for having me as the first guest on your podcast. I was just telling my husband this morning and I was looking at her like, what are you talking about? I said this to her afterwards. This is the podcast. So. She obviously was sent to even plant that seed because and then I still didn't really feel that. But something must have said, you know, yeah, I, I can't remember where the next guest came from, but I do remember. I think I started then. OK, well, look, have another conversation. She really was so encouraging. Like she was so she was sent to me, definitely, as everybody is. And the next woman I interviewed was an intuitive healer I had gone to see in Connemara on the west coast of Ireland. And I said, so I said, I'll pick people I felt very at home with and comfortable with and I felt connected with and it sort of resonated with where I am in my life and who I am sort of. So I had a lovely conversation with her and she said to me, you know, Celine, you're not going to have to look. She just said, you're not going to have to look for any of the women. They're going to find you. And that has been the case since they've literally yeah, I've reached out and I've, you know, consciously been aware and alert, but usually they're just showing up. And yeah, I've done maybe about 16, 17 conversations, I call them now. But just what you said there as well, Jen, if I was to put another word in it, they're my great teachers. Yes, it's women sharing. And when I say stories to some women, I think they feel a little, I'm sort of careful now how I word it because often they'll go, but I've no story to tell. I'm not like so-and-so. So I sort of feel it's women who are on consciously on this journey of, let's say, self-discovery or awakening or awareness or some shift has happened in their life. They've been through some challenge and something new has started to happen in them. And these conversations about are bringing, how would I describe, it's, by us having sharing these conversations, it's hopefully activating maybe or reminding or women who listen are remembering. And I think they're part of the shift of the feminine energy. Oh, I'm getting a shiver um, that is rising on the planet to come back, bring us back into balance. So I do feel when we bring energy, I think that's more I find it hard sometimes to describe, but I feel it's consciously bringing intention and energy to a conversation where we share that ripples out into the world in ways we we don't know. But um, 
I just feel very alive and connected with them. So I just trust that, I, you know, it's it's more embodied experience, really. Um, and I'm just in it like I, I might say something different next month, month to you. Like it's it's just I'm blown away. I really am blown away. And the other thing that has happened organically, nothing to do with me, really, is these are women who have never what they're saying to me is, why did you ask me? I've never been in a podcast. I've I've never spoken publicly. And this, I feel, maybe is part of my role, too, for women who haven't had a platform before and maybe don't feel they deserve a voice and they've nothing to say. And it's turning out they have an awful lot to say. Oh, well, that's, I got goosebumps, <laughs> goosebumps. Um, when when you said like when that lady said to you the women will find their way to to you, and as I was listening to you you talk, um, I heard the word midwife as if you're a midwife, and um, mm. because like um, because we're moving into the age of Aquarius, which is about the woman bringing back the original birthing codes, and if we look at back at, the, at what's happened with the women, um, and I and how the the natural healers the natural you know women have been brutally brutally um silenced with the masculine energy and and you're you're given this space you, like a midwife birthing these women into their trueness of who who they are you're you're allowing them and just through the podcast um this is what I'm hearing is through the podcast you're you're just allowing these women to step fully into who who they truly are and who they came here to to be and are given a space where women are allowed to share their stories and in and that then then has a ripple effect which will allow both women and men to be able to stand in their true power because I think men um, as well have hold of equally a powerful role as women but something's happened I don't know well I don't know but something had happened where everything has got topsy-turvy and when and there's a lot of unhappy people because they're not living the life that they truly came here to to live so when you listen to your podcast, when I listen to them, there's some women that I really strongly connect to, and then there's some that um, I don't, and that and that's mm. that's good. One of the things um, I'd like to ask you about um, is I I've been having conversations, and and I realize my conversations with people is like about mediumship and psychic and animism um and mm -hmm. that's my where I'm like it ignites the fire in me to think that we can step outside into our garden and speak to the spirits of, of the, um the plants and the trees and the wind and sun and the and the grass and it's really it's really given me a, a, a huge amount of um comfort and um, excitement for life and um how and and you're very in intuitive and you're very psychic. Do you connect to the land? Do you go out and is there special places? Yeah, it's probably been a how would it that's been a big journey for me since cancer. And I'd say I'm still on that journey of connecting again with nature. Nature has been definitely the greatest teacher to me since cancer about how to live. And I never realized it because I'd just been walking, 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 walking. I had to be stopped to. Yeah, it, there was so many layers that had to be taken off me. So I love to walk. But what's been a big part of that as well, and I'm only beginning to sort of move into this is I'm being I feel I'm being called back to the land of where my ancestors have lived. I'm feeling I don't even know how to put this into words, but I've everywhere I've been guided to go to, I've realized, oh, my, for example, where Mark, who we spoke about at the beginning, where the, he's opened the healing center right across the river. My grandmother lived there, her very first job in Ireland when she came there and she's my maternal grandmother. And I felt I went into the quantum healing chair, the Orinoco chair, and I could feel her, feel her. 
calling me back out to the land as a place to connect with my ancestors and particularly the feminine line. But I was also guided last week to go down and visit my father's side where my grandparents and great grandparents grew up. And my my father's, my mother, and my, my grandmother on my father's side came through as well. And she came through an mediumship circle as well, which I've been part of. So there's all of these. This is another development. Um, so the land, there's something there's something in me that is feeling as I heal and clear more. What my ancestors and particularly the feminine line is saying, as you do this, our power is available to you as you heal this line and you take on this role, we can then be available, like because it's all here now and I'm feeling that very strongly. So this is a new development that's just been happening for me in the last few months. It's very new. That is coming back online. I'm hearing them very strongly. I'm getting visions of them. And it's usually when I'm out it's everywhere, but it's more out on the land. So I feel they're guiding me. So my connection to nature, I suppose, I haven't. But that's another aspect of it, because I, I interviewed a beautiful woman who works with the spirit of plants. And she trained with some elders from indigenous tribes back in traditions, you know, many years. And I'm going to be doing a workshop with her in the Burren, which is a beautiful part in the west of Ireland. So... I feel I'm that's another stage, but the ancestral land has has been very it's oh, I'm getting the shivers again, as I say it. So I'm I'm being called out to there to. Yeah, and I think there's a lot of trauma around the land. I feel it when I go out there and this yeah. maybe is I don't know, but I'm getting the sense this is coming in the future of some aspect. I have a vision or a memory, I don't know which, of like the old traditions in Ireland of going out, like the Keening tradition. I was sorry, I'm going off a little bit here, but I was at a workshop at the weekend, which was a heart song drumming, which I hadn't done a full um, day of it before. And we were out on the land and I felt this really, there was a lot of tribal African sort of beautiful harmonies and singing. And there was a huge release of grief for me. And a man in the group was very interesting at the end when you talk about that, the feminine energy. And I don't know if it was helping give him permission because a lot of the women were. It was beautiful. Um, but being out there, where was I going with this now? I'm talking about the land and the ancestors. Oh, yes, the, the tradition, this tradition of keening came up for me. I don't know if you're familiar with, in Ireland, this keening mm, is the grieving, singing. the singing. The, 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 yeah, to help them to go from this world yes. back into the spirit world yes. isn't it so they're yes. guided and they don't get lost yeah and this, this was an ancient irish tradition and mm. the, in irish the woman was called the band quincia meaning the crying woman and now i think you can actually hire it like it's become and then there was the bard that said the words that sort of the story that carried them home so there were two i don't know much about it but i'm feeling very called to that so i think when you talk about story and talk about the ancestors, there's something there. I have a vision of nearly being out on the land, talking to a woman, you know, connecting so that maybe eventually the podcast will be something in that vein where we're out on the land together. And having this conversation, I, I'm just getting images of it, so. Yeah, it's um, yeah, that's a long winded answer to a question about nature, but there's some calling out to that. And it's it's really been around the ancestors and the land of my ancestors that I think I'm being called to. Yeah, work wow. with in some when way. I, when I was listening to, to, to you, just remind me, um, I, I think it was Sam or I don't know. I think Sam on Instagram put this post where she said, when we heal, like she speaks about going to onto the land and saying, I'm so sorry, we we were severed, our connection to the land was severed. And um once we when we heal that connection to the land again, we heal ourselves. We can never fully be present unless we have that connection to the land. And then when you were listen when I was listening to you talk about the ancestors, I was just getting goosebumps again because it was really much like and then I had a there's a little there's a little blue 
circle come coming on there on the screen then which is probably a um, confirmation but listening to our ancestors and you said something and it just made me go oh so I think it was along the lines of like us ancestors want to help us that's correct isn't it yes absolutely and the tra as you said there the trauma or the healing or the grief that's been huge there's something else around this grief because I've been feeling I felt huge grief before I was diagnosed with cancer. I had about six. I worked with a healer and I had about six weeks of just I don't know how to describe it other than involuntary, like an, an emotional tsunami of clearing. And I was talking It's very interesting through the drumming circle. I got talking to a man I know he teaches the drumming circle I'm in in Galway. He is going through cancer and he told me he he just pulled me aside one day and he said, you know, Celine, um, he was asking me about going through cancer and treatment and things. And then he said, I said to him, you know, grief, I said, is coming up. I just shared with him and he said, you know, I actually cried for a year last year before I got diagnosed. Something he something there was like a light bulb from that because he said he said he'd grown up in a family which was quite cold and his father and he couldn't cry. And he said, I cried and cried and cried. And then I got this diagnosis. And then I went, God, I sort of was like that too. So this is part of the healing. I It's just very interesting. I said, God, this is really part of um, the healing process. And the more that we grieve, there's the grief maybe connected with the land. I felt it so much when I was at this week, this tribal, this workshop that I was at at the weekend. And I said, I don't know what this grief is, but I, I God, I had such a release, but it's exactly what you're saying. I think we cannot move on unless we grieve the loss. You know, we have to give ourselves permission. Like I feel called to, to grieve because I've grieved my the little child inside for her. She's suddenly I can feel her. She's alive and she's happy inside. And she's like, yay, let's go do this. Let's go out and connect with everything. Whereas for years, I had just shut myself away from that because I thought I can't be like that. Like, you know, people will lock me up. It's just it's. But the grief, I think, is so important. Like you said, it's the grief for our ancestors, because my grandmother said to me, it came through in a session where she said, I didn't get to live up to my potential, but you will. And, you know, it came through and I, and I feel it. Oh, I feel her again saying it and I'm doing it for those women. You yes. Know? Yes, they, for the, they gave up for so the women much for yeah um, for the women that were silenced the the, the yeah. herbalists the healers yes the, the just every, it, it was any woman wasn't it and yeah. and and it's not not just for them it's for the people that betrayed them you know they they must be grieving because they betrayed their own family their own friends it, you know it's, it's all a very much a tangled tangled mess yeah. um so you're doing a mediumship course as well. I am. Well, I was asked, <laughs> I, I probably need a mediumship course, but my astrology teacher, probably knowing me quite well, and is she's also um, been training as a medium. She's a beautiful, amazing woman who I interviewed in my podcast. She's just who another wonderful um, Anna Isabel. She's based in the UK. So she's an analytical hypnotherapist. She's an astrologer. She's a medium. She's um she loves works with animals. She lives down near Devon, I think. Oh, I think. What, could you spell her name for me? Anna. A -N -A. Anna. She's originally Portuguese from. I live in Toronto. Isabel. A I A I S I S A B E L. And then that's what she goes by. She's her a channel. She was interviewed by Richard Bobes recently on his YouTube channel. If you've heard of him. No, but did she, you know there was one lady? She had a blue blue hat on. No, it wasn't her. She's dark hair. She talked about um very much about freedom and what it means to be free and then brought in. I did two conversations with her. She's on my channel. Um, oh, I'll go back and look. Yeah, she's really I, I, I wouldn't even call it an interview because I asked one question that I felt guided to ask. And then she even said to me afterwards, I didn't expect to say all of that, but it was a beautiful, beautiful um. Yeah. Um, yeah. Listening to her was beautiful. But yeah. So she had said to me, I felt the calling. I suppose that's it. I felt the calling from my grandmother that what I really feeling is the unseen world, as I call it, that I was always connected to as a child and probably mm -hmm. felt more naturally at home there. 
and found it very hard in this world. And I think it's important to say that I don't say it's all, you know, all um, butterflies and everything now, but I'm sort of very grounded, I feel, and becoming more grounded in who I am so that this world that I've chosen to be in is becoming easier, whereas it made no sense to me before. But now I'm realizing I've all of this available to me to work with me and they want to work with me. And it doesn't have to be a struggle like I used to think it was. And mm -hmm. so it was my grandmother, really, um, who said, yeah, we're here. Like, come on, talk to us. <laughs> and I needed a bit of support around that. So I'm in a medium mediumship circle. I haven't done any training and I'm feeling like I probably could do with that. But a very interesting thing happened to me. I was sort of very afraid initially. So I was introduced to this circle and I contacted the woman through Anna and she said, well, normally I mentor people first or they do classes, but have you had any experience? And I said, I can't say I've had any experience, but I feel a really strong calling and I I probably haven't consciously connected with them, but I, I have been getting messages. So she said, well, come along to the first circle and see how you feel. So I did. And the minute I sent her the email on the day of the first circle, I was out for a walk. Suddenly there was someone beside me. I said, yes, I'll be there. And next minute, boom, there's some this woman, you know, uh, like a spirit with me on the walk. And I was, what is this? I'm having this really strong image of this woman and what she's saying to me. And I didn't think any more of it until I went into the circle. And I was like, I didn't even know how this would work. And she said, um, so, you know, people would say I'm, connect in and I'm getting whoever and then she would say does anyone does anyone claim this person and they would have to give evidence but I said I don't know all I know is this woman has been with me since then and talking 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 and I described her and one of the women in the group said I think that could be my grandmother from what I said so I that was the extent of what I was able to deliver maybe or say but it was like the once I said yes you know isn't it I just said and the same happened the following week and her daughter who had passed away quite young because it was a young girl appeared with me so but I sort of feel I need to develop I don't you know once they come in and they tell me <laughs> something I sort of I can often then maybe get into my head but I can feel them um yeah so I haven't the former time but that's that's coming I can feel it you know so maybe really... I do need to get some classes or something. Oh, no, no, I think you're on the right. I mm -hmm. think you're exactly in the right place. And I feel like within that circle, that's how it's going to develop. Okay. I really I really do. And it's really interesting, isn't it? Because um, I had no idea um, about the mediumship with, with you, how that was no, interesting to right. you. <laughs> and then I said to you at the very beginning, oh, my podcast seems to be all about mediumship, <laughs> talking to mediums. <laughs> and then voila, you're sat opposite me. Do you see You're them? Reminding in, me. <laughs> I know. Do you see them in your mind's eye or do you physically see them? Um, it's I was trying to even put where when I was walking, that woman, I could sort of see her. I, an image of her came to, but she was talking to me also. So I was hearing her and I was seeing her. I was sort of sensing her. And she was like this little Italian woman in a kitchen. I could see her how she was dressed and now she was saying stuff to me and I found it initially sort of, is she saying that? Like, so, you know, sort of getting out of the way of analyzing too much what she was saying. I, I was trying to listen and I feel I'm better when I'm moving. Something is telling me, I used to listen a lot to podcasts when I was walking and I'm every time I go now, something happens that means I can't listen to the podcast. So I'm obviously being told, you need to go into silence. You need to just be on the walk and be open. And yes, and and I and what I heard then was like because you have always been walking with the podcast, is like saying to the spirit world, "I'm actually listening as I walk." So that's their way of coming forward yes. and working with you because you're yes. now you have not listened to the i the you know the podcast. Your your intention is I'm listening. So they be oh. I'll talk to you when you're on your walk instead. Very good. Thank you, Jen. Yeah. That's so true. It happened again yesterday evening. I went to listen to something and then I said, no, you're talking to Jen tomorrow. Stop and took off the, and I listened to your message again. I said, I want to listen to your message. And then I just turned everything off and I walked and I said, okay, whatever you want me to yeah. say, just show yeah. me tomorrow. I'm not going to overly prepare or whatever, but just allow it 
opened up the channel, I suppose. So yeah, exactly that. And it was so funny yesterday evening, it happened again. And I couldn't, even when I want, uh, something is stopping me from now listening. It, well, not stop, sorry, listening to podcasts, but listening to spirit. Yes. I, I because, um, um, because this, this, uh, I don't know, don't know. I've always, I've always, um, sat in a circle. That's how I went, ended up at Ragdale. Okay. But whereas my two friends, Nicola and Alison, went down the path and they work as mediums, it was all some, something that I always wanted to do, but never kind of like, well, I don't know, I'm, I'm digging myself a hole here. Alison said, Jen, you know, you're more than capable of being a medium. You just doubt mm. yourself. That's what's blocking you. Mm. But interestingly, like you, um, in the past, I've always had like the YouTube on in the background when I'm I'm doing something and I'm listening to that. Whereas now, recently, I just wanted silence. I just don't want anything to fill my my head with with chatter um, as I'm preparing to talk to you to today. And I just um, that's so interesting. Yeah, that's just, so interesting. Yeah, isn't it that sort of. I think we're entering entering an age. I heard it somewhere again, or maybe we're in it. It. I loved the language. I don't know who said it. We're entering a time of streaming, not storing. So isn't that a really nice way? So rather than I used to get, I often would wake up in the morning, have this insatiable appetite, like oh, there's so much I need to read and listen and learn today that I get overwhelmed and I get nothing done. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, I don't know where to start. And now I'm realizing, no, all of it's available. You don't necessarily, but it can come through. Oh, yes, okay, yes, certain things you do need to study, but all of this is going to come through as you need. It's going to stream through. It's oh. not that I have to go, you know, that's what I mean. You don't have to go and read a big book and study it and learn it off. It's 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 a different time. Um, and I always struggled with that way of learning. And that's another benefit that has come to me through astrology, learning how I absorb and process information and it's more organic and it's more in the moment it's more quantum than linear and i been able to do the linear as you have to in school and whatever but it's, i've actually realized it's very uncomfortable i start to feel really really stressed when i go into that sort of over preparation you know it's um so i think that's i think that is maybe why we're being you know, drop, you know, yes, it's nice to listen to podcasts from time to time, but yes, <laughs> so maybe it'll come okay. in another way to you, you know, through a conversation like we're having now, you know, it'll, it, yeah, the information comes to us. Yeah, it does. But, um, the, the other thing, um, is going back to when you, you mentioned it's like really going back when you got that strong message from your, your grandma, um, and you, you went to, to meet up with Mark Atwood and the Healing Center, and you sat in this chair. Is I thought you said Orinoco chair. Yeah, it's called an Orinoco chair. <laughs> um, Could you tell yeah. me a little bit about that? Ooh, it's a hard one to describe, but it's um, so it's a chair you sit in, and they're just a normal chair. Three pillars, one in front, two at either side, and they are filled with I think photon light and copper and as I understand that they sort of create an energetic field oh, and you come oh, into yes. it and it sort of works with you and everybody's experience is so unique I don't know even some people are very healing experience some people are very spiritual psychic experience which I did um so it's like you sort of merge with the quantum nearly and whatever is needed with that in that feed from that field happens in the session it's it's amazing um but i'm i so yeah that's one the 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 core sort of therapy and starting out is the oxygen therapy and this is another there's lots of other things that will come in but they work beautifully together because i found i went into the oxygen chamber i felt hugely relaxed very um yeah oxygenated and very um connected and like my body had gone into sort of healing mode naturally and then you go into the Orinoco chair and then that's sort of then you're in a state where it can work with you I think that's what I'm beginning to learn I don't know Jen you may know this a long time is that once we give the body the right environment it just does what it needs we just support it and it's like this amazing machine or not even machine but you know technology 
And um, I think that's the future of healing. I really do. Yeah, we've, we've, we've talked about this and we're going to get have another conversation yeah. because it's still in the air. Yeah, it's, it is. It's exactly. Still in it's the... just in the air. But it, it's very interesting just from the point of view of my own healing since cancer. You know, you were we go on a um, and I've been, you know, been in, gone to a lot of different therapies. But yeah, it's a very interesting times. Very interesting times. Very. Um, can can I just like to to um oh you shared so much information i've learned so much about you selena i thought i knew you but i, 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 <laughs> I realized... don't know myself jen so thank you for asking the question that's the whole point of these conversations isn't it like you yeah. and me and me and the podcast you learn about yourself through listening to someone else it's it's yeah this is this these are the words i was trying to i still haven't found exactly for the podcast is this sort of weaving together that's happening with women and this feminine energy and how it weaves together to create it's and I keep getting shivers every time I say that so weaving is the only word that comes to me that's sort of because it's not it's not a an entity in its own like you say something I say something it's what comes out of this that is rippling in the ethers that is changing the world I really without sounding too grandiose about it but I think that is isn't it it's definitely it's, Definitely Much simpler that. than we think, like we yes. create from the unseen. So it's where it's all at. <laughs> yeah, that that yeah, that that's just summed it up mm -hmm. absolutely beautiful. Um, and then it just made me send it out send me thought of something else. It was like our wounds and going inwards mm. and finding mm. the information. Mm. Like I always see it's like little steps going back down into the cave within me, and there I meet meet me and um Sometimes she's this wise woman and sometimes she's this young girl and um, and I can then set sail along, along the waters to different realms and um, that memory just can come back to us um, because as a child, my my um, fascination was always the unseen world and always listening and listening to the trees and being interested in well, being aware of spirit as well, though my grumpy said there was nobody there, so that confused me. Um, but yeah, I was going to round round this um, beautiful. Com I feel like we could do part two and part three, actually, if if you, if you <laughs> mind. Um, and uh, and the other thing I wanted to just very quickly mention is like the feminine, the female side, because um, my daughter's having a baby, and the baby happens to be a little girl, and I've learned that. You know, they used to, they used to want, they wished for the girls, you know, down the, the, the mother having the daughter and the daughter is a feminine line that is very, very powerful. But again, it's all, we've been taught to believe, oh, you need the boy first, but no, it's mm -hmm. the girls, girls first, because they continue the wisdom and they're the healers and they're, you know, as well mm -hmm. as men, I'm not dis di dissing men at all. And that's not the point of my conversation, but there is something powerful about the females something very powerful and like you said I think we're going to start to remember and realize who we truly are as well but yeah because we have all this wisdom that's what I feel the wisdom of our ancestors of the feminine line is deep within us we're just remembering it's not that we have to go out anywhere it's and we're all activating or reminding each other unconsciously like it's like getting all these little light bulb moments going, oh, I know that something switches on inside us. So it's another light comes on of that, which is really exciting. Like it's really is being lit up from the inside out. Yes. And we're sent or whatever way we weave, we designed. So, yeah, at the right time. Yeah. Um, but the grief, I think it's important to say, because sometimes I feel I've often brushed over and make it sound like, as well that the journey can be all oh it's all once you surrender it's all fine there is I wouldn't say not work isn't the right word but we have to be kind to ourselves in it too because there is a lot of this I keep going back to grief I, because it's just been such a big part I never grieved anything I suppressed everything all my life and so there's just this and I think once we say yes, then all of the ancestors and everyone else is going, great, she's open for business. Nobody else is. I'll, I'll go there. You know, there's sort of certain people once you open the channel. So you have to. It, it, but, but on the other side of that, I would say it is beautifully 
um, what's the word? It's beautifully managed in such a way that it doesn't, you're only given what you're able for. You might get a burst of it, um, which I did. I wasn't going to go, just to give you an example, I wasn't going to go to that workshop. And I kept being called and I said, go. And I knew I would, I was going there to release something. And I had been feeling, I was getting a lot of irritation all around my eye and there was stuff happening. And I, I knew I needed to be in a safe space where that would be given space. And it did happen. And then that started to shift even yesterday when I came home, you know, it's, so it's just amazing. You know, we're always, we're, we'll be, but I think many people are afraid to go into that thinking they'll get lost. I used to be as well. If I start to feel, oh my God, the pain of all my life will just overwhelm me and I'll never, I'll get lost. And you don't, you don't, you're only ever given in waves. It's like waves. You're given what you're able to deal with. And then you sort of integrate that. And it's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Once you see that, isn't it? Once you realize you won't be swept away, you won't die. It's no, it's just mm. part of. Because part equally, of. when when we give permission to, for the spirit world to, to work with us, mm. equally, um, we're taught the art of protection. Like, um, you know, I, I, I imagine this. Um, well, I say the words, um, lo my love is so strong the love the ancestors have for me is also protection as well around me because you know we we have been with the new age movement taught to believe everything's um rainbows and unicorns and we live in a realm that is extremely magical because i always remember listening to thomas sheridan talk years mm. and years and years ago about being so careful about the fairies they're not walt disney's version of fairies they're they're real Mm -hmm. And, you know, you respect them and you respect the land um, because they can they can be quite um, forceful if you do something, something wrong. And um, I'm having a menopause moment because I thought, what have I gone off on this tangent about the fairies? And, I, and oh, no, that's it. Yes. Yeah, so we are protected and there is a need to be protected to us. And I, I'm having a strong urge to to read something to to you next before we finish. Um, mm -hmm finish something so I'm just going to get my journal it's just over there mm -hmm. um but you you know walking uh, for example walking this path and um and and your podcasts have been so instrumental in my coming home feeling like you know you've you've interviewed some amazing women and and they've just blown blown me away and uh, blown away the cobwebs and um, allowed me to walk on this path that is bringing me the greater joy because we were coming back from a, a day out yesterday um, and I was driving so there was elements of me really concentrating on driving because I don't know about Ireland but in, you know the parts of England there's potholes in the road and you know you, you're watching the potholes and my husband was talking about like the state of the world and I and and I've been down that rabbit hole and and I'm now at that place where at, well, at this moment in time where I don't want to know what's going off out there. You know, I can't personally change it, but I can, I want to be in my world and my world is very similar to, to your world and it's bringing me the greatest comfort, it's bringing me the greatest challenges and it's like because it is a challenge because when you start to um let go of things and surrender you're letting go of things that no longer serve you but it is you know you it is that it is is i don't know what word it describe it i don't know i can't think of the word to describe it maybe sometimes we don't need words no. maybe it's feelings is just enough mm -hmm. but there was I was telling you about the book I was reading, mm -hmm. which is called The Gathering by Catherine Gennett, which is G-E-N-E-T. Um, and did, where did I write it? In my, oh, The Prayer of the Wild Wood. And um, it's very similar to the Lord's Prayer. And even that, when I said the Lord's Prayer, it's like cringed. Um, I hope I don't offend anyone who's listening to this. But this is the prayer that she's wrote in the book. Um, our mother who body whose body is the land blessed be thy flesh as above so it is below as it is without so too it's within your bounty is also our own 
and we are in service to your needs. For compassion lives in our heart and kindness moves our hands. For we are eternal and connected and we grow in the spirit of love. So it is, so it always has been, and so it shall remain. World beyond time, world without end. And I'm like, when I read this prayer, I was, I just noticed you had your eyes closed. <laughs> I thought, wow, if, if everyone read that in the church, it would just remind us our connection to to this world. But I, as I said a few minutes ago, in astrology, you're using it as a personal tool for personal development. Have they spoke about what is coming in for this year, what the energy is for 2024? Because it is quite a powerful year, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, the teacher I go to doesn't focus so much on that because she would use it. I think that's known as mundane astrology, which sort of Pam Gregory, I think everybody's who's interested in astrology nearly has heard of Pam Gregory, which is sort yeah. of, you know, what's happening in the so we have started with well not started with them probably a year, really looking at how you the building blocks of a sort of an astrological uh, a birth chart and the makeup, the blueprint, I call it. It's just the, the easiest way I feel is it's my unique blueprint. Um Obviously, like I follow other astrology and um, astrologers, but I'm not qualified as an astrologer to say. But I think we all know that, you know, or we keep hearing that I think from the mid-March, definitely into the end of April, there are huge, huge shifts between equinoxes and eclipses. And then there's a big conjunction of Uranus and Jupiter, which I know it's happening on a particular day, but the energies of it all of these energies are all much um, go on much bigger. And Uranus is about, as I understand it, sort of sudden change, freedom. You know, it's very sort of electric, really, you know, sudden change. And then Jupiter expands. So it expands whatever it comes in touch with. And it really, you know, um, so even just knowing that would suggest <laughs> there's something um, I get the sense myself. I feel I can feel it already in Ireland a greater, greater awakenings, let's say, greater um, awakenings happening this year and not in the way often we expect, because just one example I'll give, this is my sense, Now I'm not saying it may not be this true for everyone, is we had a referendum that sort of crept up on us in Ireland about a week ago that most people didn't even hardly know what it was about or sort of was just, and they got a resounding no, no on two issues which they assumed they would get a yes. They advocated for a yes. All of the media, everything was yes, yes, yes. And the people spoke probably for the first time in I don't know how many years because there hasn't been. And it was just very interesting. I was like shocked myself. That was the day I traveled to the land of, I say, my ancestors, my my dad's side of the family. And I could feel them with me. I could feel it under the earth. There is a rumbling happening of... I could just feel it. It's the only words. And I went into a local church to get water. Hold my mother likes holy water, and there was nobody in it. Church in the countryside, and the door was open. And I just went in, and I went up. And I'm not religious in that sense, but I lit a candle, and I just sort of said, "I can feel it now again." They, it's when we talk about the ancestors calling us. It's this. This is this is the great awakening. I feel like oh, I'm feeling it again now as I speak. So that to me is. I don't know if you connected in with the astrology, but yes, because I sort of, you know, you're sort of start studying some of this and understanding it, and then you have to sort of embody and feel it. So that's what I'm feeling. And I think that referendum, I said to someone, you could never have predicted that that would be anywhere in giving signals, but it's giving a signal of something, I feel. And it might be on many different issues and on many different levels, because we're all on different levels of understanding and awareness of, it doesn't really matter, I think it's, it's just there's a very clear no, no. It's very interesting. It was two no's. <laughs> wow. Two no's because it was two issues. So to me, that's the start of something big. I do feel the um the Mar April is gonna be a big month, and that can be it'll affect us all differently. I don't think we'll be the same after this year, because I think a lot of the astrology would point to, you know, 25, 26, we're gonna be into really creating um 
I can feel it in myself. I don't know if you, I can feel the sort of, I just go with that. And the astrology always reflects where I'm at. But I think that your own birth chart for me has just been such a guiding light. It's made so, it's helped me pull so many pieces of me together, like the little child and the sort of journey I've gone on. It's the circular journey of a little, the blueprint and then understanding I chose this and sort of coming back to that memory. I wrote a poem about it and I wanted to say to you, I don't know if you want me to, if I could, if I could share it at the end. It's called The Architect and I wrote it quite a long time ago, not a long time ago, last year. And it makes total sense to me. It's it almost brings the astrology together for me about what it's all about. If Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I just feel this year is I don't know. How do you feel about it? Um, I feel um, from the numerology point of view, because um, I like I, I also um, this other guy was saying we need to revisit 2019, what mm -hmm. we were thinking about in 2019 and what was our focus and our aim on. So and he says now is the time to bring it. This was last year. He was saying you, you've got to start start it up again. You, you know, the, the energy is supporting you. So in numerology terms, because um, numerology is always fascinating me. And when I was at Ragdale, I used to do color readings, which was based on someone's date of birth, which revealed a lot about you. And I realized I, I always remember I was reading this um, elderly la lady and I was talking about a past. And mm. then I, I had my eyes closed and I looked up and she was fast asleep snoring. And she goes, oh, I'm so sorry. She goes, but you took me back to my childhood. And um, it was just so lovely. And I just fell asleep. And I went, that's OK. We won't charge you. Um, but yeah, numerology wise, it is this first part of the year is feeling the imposter syndrome where we think we're not good enough. We don't believe in ourselves. And the energy is very kind of like, and, and it ties in with the season, doesn't it? Because when we come out of winter, we've been in hibernation and spring is about stepping, uh, awakening. But this is the year where we can't hide hide our talents and gifts anymore. We we are being pushed. They're, no, not pushed. Mm. Uh, there's a lot of people who will find they really have to be true to who they are and um and be creative because that's all what it all boils down to as human beings we are creative mm -hmm. and we can birth into this reality um and the rumbling is from the earth mother and we have that connection to the cosmic mother and we are, are like a tree aren't we where we birth into this into this reality mm -hmm. so yes in numerology mm -hmm. terms it is very much about you know you've you've got to step into who you've come into you you can't hide and anymore and one of the things I did outside because like this morning I, I just sent my roots down into the earth like the tree and then um my my branches I could feel my body becoming the tree and my branches were reaching out to to you know I had my eyes closed and but my my branches were reaching up to the sky and and to the and and for a second I was gone because I opened up my eyes and I thought, oh, I'm in the garden. But for a second, I was gone. That was very powerful. Mm. So, yes, there's, it's going to be a very interesting year, isn't it? Yeah, it feels it really feels like it. And you get um, and I think the more. What was I trying to say? This, what another aspect I found very interesting is, you know, and you would even with the podcast and in other things, where we all have gone probably on a since 2019, 2020 in on a journey of, you know, wherever that brought us. And it was sort of more internal. And where do we sit on all of these things? Now we're sort of coming back out, you know, into the world. And often what I found is in I'm being presented with situations and people that I'm like, mm, I you know, maybe challenge me a little bit, bit uncomfortable going, no, that's not really where. And I'm sort of. It was similar even to the circle I was in and some of the guests that show up, I'm sort of, but they always there. I'm, I'm, I'm sort of when I'm about to sort of when I start to feel really tight and go, no, 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 no. I say, no, trust this. And even if it does make you feel uncomfortable, if it's been shown to you, there's something you need to see because we can only step into like what you're saying if. Eh, 
through more taking off all the layers of all these conditioning and beliefs and and judgments because ultimately we're one humanity and we have to find a way i think we got so divided we have to find a way back to each other and i'm getting a very strong message that the work i i will be doing needs to be very deep in the community it's not about running away and escaping somewhere it's about being and not judging you know it's, there's a whole this you know I, i'm i'm finding other things out about myself that sometimes aren't so nice going oh i am judging that and i thought i wasn't and you know, so there's there's going to be that in it to become more authentic. I have to let go of a lot of these things that have kept me feeling comfortable. And, you know, when we can mm -hmm. put certain people in a box, because this is the division that has just keeps. Which we know is sort of part of what has been keeping us disempowered and controlled. And yes, we have to move beyond that. Um, yeah. So I have to move beyond it myself. You know, there's no point looking out in the world saying it. Um, so it's yeah, yeah, because they they've wanted it to divide us. That that I think that yeah. was the whole point of the last yeah. three years. That great divide, um, and you know, I, and the hope you do. They spoke about it as two rivers. You either go down the river of love, not like New Age love, but love, mm. or you go down the river of fear. And we've been living in fear. We That's what our whole life has been about, fear, lack of this, lack of that, lack of everything else. And then they brought the New Age movement into control and ma manipulate us into thinking, right, we need to manifest wealth, manifest the house, manifest the car. But in reality, no, it's not that. Um, and and that path of of love but we've got to bring together everyone to, and and then they can't because the energy listening to you talk what i'm hearing is the energy is so strong and if we come back together it will start to really crack and crumble well it's cracked and crumbled already it's it, it is it's the tower it's been destroyed it, we will never go but no. the, from the new it grows. But I think what's also very what I've been feeling is rather than saying, oh, I wish everybody would. I don't even like that word wake up, but I wish everybody would see what I see. But I think what I well, what I have felt, particularly since that referendum is no, everybody will see what they need to see. And yes. it is not up to it's not we're all going to see the same thing because we are in different bodies in a whole different sort of we have a whole different pair of goggles, each of us in this world. So it's not like you're going to show one movie and we'll all go, oh, yeah, I get it. So that to me was a real revelation. Well, wow, gosh, this is there's, a, there's an intelligence that is far beyond anything I'll ever be able to mm. yeah, imagine. Mm, it's yeah. like if we all saw it, then that would mean we're all robots. But we've all come yes. from from different realities, different realms different experience past lives we, we probably you know we may not all be well we'll be from all different places so mm. what we've come here to to experience is we not all the, on the same um page really are we no we, no so that's in the same book <laughs> yes and that's, a, <laughs> and that's okay <laughs> and it's okay isn't it so um yeah thank you so much thank you so I'm 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 getting that sense like right. Let's mm. finish with your poem. Is that um, okay? Yes. I just felt called to mention it. So yeah, and I and I feel that's that's a lovely way to end this beautiful conversation with with your poem. So I'll hand it back over to you to read and it. Thank you, Jen. It's such a beautiful, just a first, such a beautiful opportunity to share what I didn't even know was going. That is the point that was going to sort of nearly be activated in me now you know the yes. broad alive so it's just yeah been such a beautiful experience for me oh. I feel more expanded by it and that is the point isn't it we're here to keep expanding expanding because the universe expands through us yes exactly so it has to continually be an expansion you just um so I hope you enjoy this I wrote this when I went on a writing weekend and a week and nothing was coming to me at all but this did in the end not in the end but I think it was yeah it was sort of a sort of a summation about how I yeah feel about what we plan before we come here and it's called the architect so sorry I'm just looking at it on my screen here um, and I'm just going to close my eyes and listen okay the architect exploding in the night sky your ferocity moves silently with determined speed 
towards a destination soon forgotten. No time to look back and take a snapshot of the thrilling ride that lies ahead as it dissolves into dust at the touch of your clever hand. With great abandon, you hurtle onwards, casting your net of dreams in far-flung reaches of the waiting lands, your catch to be collected according to the grand design you plotted long before, as you measured out every tear and every roar and felt yourselves vibrate and soar. Imprinted and etched within, it is only you who can wear this skin. The players are assembled, planets carefully aligned. The checkerboard is ready, each move delicately primed. I changed my mind, I got it wrong. There's been a mistake, that's not my song. Voices catch as they stumble on, the daring architect of this master plan. An intrepid explorer, cleverly disguised, soon to be ignited by the blueprint in the skies. That's it. <laughs> Thank you so much. I have literally got goosebumps all on my oh. arm and I just felt this wave of energy, coolness behind me of... Um, yeah, people just coming behind me and listening and going, yes, Celine, that's spot on. Mm -hmm. so thank you. Thank you. Oh, I'm going to put all the links to, to, do you, do you have a web page or is it, can people? Yeah, I have a website and I have, um, there are links to the podcast there, but I, yeah, I have a website and yeah. then I have my, huge, you know, the, the usual yeah, I'm going to put your. I'm going to put all the details about how people can reach out and listen to your podcast, which I highly, highly recommend, um, in the description below. So from from all of my heart to you, thank you for this amazing experience and for your time and energy. I've learned so much from you, Celine. Oh well, thank you, Jen. Right back at you. Um, just beautiful, beautiful to be here. And for any, if I can say, for any women who are listening it's it's not an exclusion of men it's just um i suppose women are embodying maybe more in this life of this um feminine energy even though men do too but if there are women who would like to come on and talk to me and share um please reach out just for a conversation because we all benefit like from this so thank you so much jen i really appreciate it thank you Right. So thank you to the audience. Um, thank you for listening. Um, as always, please share with me privately or on the comments um, how what you've learned or what you gained from this um, conversation. And um, please like and share so we can reach out to as many people as possible to give them genuine, genuine strength and power and um, a space where they are held and listened to so I'm now just going to stop recording and realize I could have paused the recording when the phone went but um anyway I waffle at the end thank you lots of love to everyone and goodbye for now thank you bye